What's this Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 hide off camera in the caves in Play Care Playhouse? Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 is full of gruesome locations that force a player to solve puzzles, navigate ever-changing mazes, and evade the nightmarish creatures that lurk within. Today, we'll be taking a closer look at the caves and playhouse areas, as we break down how they function behind the scenes while taking a look out of bounds, including this hidden scrap location that features a working duck boat ride. We've got lots to cover, so I hope you enjoy today's look behind the scenes of Chapter 3 Deep Sleep. So before jumping in, I'll quickly recap this portion of the game so we are all refreshed on the events that take place here. So after escaping and witnessing Miss Delight's horrific death, we discover a new hand and find ourselves entering this large cavern. We then have to go through this extensive puzzle. Once clearing the entirety of this section, as we escape, we can see Catnap worshipping a shrine of some sort. This follows with us entering the playhouse section. Nothing could go wrong here, right? Heading into here, we're immediately greeted and chased by these small, smiling critters, who want nothing more than to devour our body. After painstakingly escaping these guys, we eventually find ourselves in this creepy jail area with Dog Day, the last remaining smiling critter. Things get bad real fast, and a chase commences, as Dog Day's critter-infested body yearns for our blood. After a bunch of running and this leap of faith, we eventually escape this treacherous dog. So now let's break the game some. After getting our new flare gun hand, the door to our left will open, allowing us to proceed. In here, we need to grab this battery in order to open the following door. There is another door over where the battery is though, but as we move our camera over there to check it out, we can see it sort of leads nowhere. Deleting the door reveals a cement wall, but if we destroy the wall as well, we'll see this giant area that we can jump down to safely. It doesn't really lead anywhere though, but here we are. With the view brightened up, we can get a good look around the entirety of this cave and this large puzzle. During my first playthrough, I noticed two sets of stairs within the structure which can be used. However, the one leads to a drop, which kills you if you jump, and the other lets you walk down into a death barrier. Unfortunately, not a lot occurs in this section when it comes to any type of off-camera activity, but once we beat this puzzle, the player will then see Catnap down below. Down here is where we can see Catnap praising this shrine made up of multiple creatures, including, um, this poor employee. Glorious! It's fair to speculate that this may be Catnap's way of showing his allegiance to the prototype. Food for thought, that's for sure. Getting down here does not phase Catnap, as it remains in the same pose. Eventually, the creepy kitty does disappear though. Let's make our way out of these caves now. Once we enter this restricted access door, we will load into the playhouse section as we cross this bridge. Before going any further though, we can see it's not that far of a drop where this bridge is. If the player managed to fall down below in this area, they discover there's no death barrier here, and you can roam freely as you please. You can see the legs of this platform aren't quite touching the ground down here, but that's about it. Heading further in, we have our first encounter with a small smiling critter. When you shoot a flame at them, it retreats back from where it came, but we can take a closer look at how this critter emerges. It starts off in this pipe and clips through this wall as it comes into the player's sight. When the little guy retreats, it of course retraces its steps back from where it came, continuously backpedaling, and eventually disappearing within this pipe. However, as many players will know, the following sequence of events involves many of these critters. Being patient but quick, we navigate these padded rooms as we evade these hungry little babies. During my first playthrough, in a panic, I remember trying to use this door, initially thinking it was the way out. Trying to open it does nothing. Coming back, I realized if we were to delete this door, the player would discover what appears to be a leftover area. You can see the small smiling critters can't enter in here, which would make sense, but as you can see, it seems to be an area that the developers may have initially planned on using. This hallway leads to another padded room with multiple platforms within it. It appears a player would have had to make their way up these platforms to potentially retrieve something at the top. Coming up here shows there's nowhere else to go, leaving us at a dead end. The player has limited time to see this room from down below during the upcoming chase we have a dog day, but we're not quite at that part yet. Regardless, it would have been interesting to see what could have been with this closed off area if the developers utilized it. Something else to note, while running from these critters, you can stop right around here and then backtrack to the previous room to see that it no longer has any critters. So basically, this is a way to manipulate how the critters spawn, which makes it much more relaxing to explore. Moving on though, instead of taking the correct route that leads us into the next section, I found myself taking a detour, which led me to, well, the next section, just on the roof of it. I can see the smiling critters aren't pleased with me being out here, but I found myself having some fun as I explored this area with our character. 
While I was up here, I noticed that there was water down below. And after taking a closer look, you can see what appears to be another leftover area. These rooms consist of beach and pirate themed decor with a little path of water flowing through all of it, which explains the water we initially saw. Normally this area can be seen during our chase with Dog Day, but when the player usually reaches this pool room, they proceed forward beyond the pool, skipping this area rather quickly. However, if we enter this room and go left instead, there is a wall here that is hiding the entrance to this duck ride we just found. Deleting this wall reveals a doorway for the room, and surprisingly enough, if you interact with the duck, it buckles us in and initiates the ride. I thought this was pretty cool to find still in the game. This is yet again another intended obstacle that the player would have been tasked with prior to being scrapped, but it was abandoned for one reason or another. Once you start this water quest, the player will encounter a few gates throughout the ride, so we need to pull the levers in order to bring down these gates. Letting go of the lever stops the process, so you have to hold it until it's complete. Only then will the duck boat proceed. It was glitchy and hard to grab the remaining levers, but by manipulating my character, I was able to continue the ride. I wonder if the player would have had to fight off waves of the small smiling critters as they lowered these gates. It would have been neat to see this area fully completed, but the ride does eventually come to an end. Once the ride ends, the player is stuck to the duck we traveled on with no normal way of getting off it. Also, because I changed my size as I was grabbing these levers, my hand was glitching out and was huge. It was visibly clear that I was struggling. I did manage to free our character from this duck and exit through the ship, as we were being blocked by invisible colliders. I am of course speculating that this was the intended path, but there's a wall block in the way here, and after deleting it, you can see where the exit would have been for this duck ride. Remember that room we skipped by walking over it though? This is another area where not much happens outside of usual gameplay. I'm not quite sure how it happened, but I managed to hurt all the critters in this specific area, and as you can see, they are stuck. Eventually, you can get them all stuck like this and make this puzzle much easier than intended. This puzzle involves the player needing to pull these blocks onto these buttons, which power up the switch that, in turn, allows us to move on to the pool area. Outside of this though, the remaining areas around the pool are just unfinished hallways not really worth exploring, as they lead nowhere. This follows with the horrific interaction with Dog Day though. You can see half of his body is missing, and they've clearly seen better days. Unglorious. They should see a doctor soon. After Dog Day basically tells the player that they're surrounded and that they need to get out of this place, Dog Day's day immediately gets worse as small smiling critters come pouring out of the walls and enter into Dog Day's body. My first playthrough of this shows that I was not ready and found myself trapped as Dog Day ends my life. Taking a closer look at these critters attacking Dog Day shows that once they enter the body, they themselves will shrink in size, making for a funny sight. Normally at this point, we have to wait for Dog Day to come after us, and then these boards on the floor will break, beginning this chase. However, if we rewind back before interacting with Dog Day, we can slip through these boards and traverse this path without being chased. The entire path is free to walk and explore at our leisure. This allows us to see the duck ride from above, as we look down below from this pipe, instead of running for our lives. The pipe's doors function normally, despite the lack of dog day, and we can see that even if this one in particular didn't shut, it would have been a dead end anyways. It's at this part of the chase that if we look up, we can see the other room we had discovered earlier as well. The one with all the platforms and whatnot. Continuing on, there are a couple more dead ends the player could potentially run into, but it's here that we need to drop down to move on. However, I wanted to delete this door in front of me and use that path instead. This resulted with me accidentally deleting more than I wanted, as I found myself stranded on the wrong side of the pipe. This path I intended on using, of course, would not have led anywhere, but we can just warp across the map. And now can proceed as we're met with three slides to choose from. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Normally, we have to choose a slide quickly, as Dog Day will be hot on our tail. After going down the slide, we can find Dog Day up above, puzzled with what slide to go down. This, of course, is slowed down, but Dog Day will continue to linger here for the remainder of the chase. Dog Day does continue to chase us though, it just happens to not be the same exact version that was chasing us. Looking at this area from Out of Bounds reveals that there are three Dog Days outside of this room waiting for us. Depending on which slide we go down determines which Dog Day will activate and come for us. In another instance, I was on the roof right before this room, and as I walked up and over into it, I activated Dog Day anyways as it killed me through the ceiling. I tried this again and successfully avoided triggering Dog Day, which allows me to get up close and personal. The Dog Days become harmless at this point as I'm able to check out all three of them. We can see the hair glitching out on this one in particular, but that's about it. 
Progressing normally, the player would have to make this jump to safety, ending the chase with Dog Day. The Dog Day that pursued us in this room will stop and remain in this room until we move on. So we take this elevator up to a room where we then end up going down this slide. Checking the slide out from another view reveals that it leads to the void, which is exactly why we load into another section while sliding down it. But with that, that's everything I found out of bounds in the Playhouse area. Hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next video real soon. Cheers!